Has the media gone overboard covering the death of Michael Jackson? Well, that's the topic of our face-off tonight. And joining me now are Howard Kurtz, media reporter for The Washington Post and host of CNN's Reliable Sources. Also, Robert Thompson, professor of popular culture at Syracuse University. And gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us tonight. You know, um, it, has to, it has this interesting uh, dichotomy because you're fascinated by it, and yet everyone seems to be saying, okay, maybe it's too much. But yet again, you really are very interested in each detail. Let me start with you, Howard. What do you think is going on here? This is an interesting phenomenon at best. Kitty, the coverage is out of control and it's becoming an embarrassment to the news business. The almost wall-to-wall -wall cable coverage led by CNN, particularly at night, the network morning shows, the primetime network specials. Look, in the first couple of days, one of the most famous people on the planet dies under uh, murky circumstances, somebody whose music touched millions. Sure, it's a huge story. We're now in day seven. You've still got the yellow breaking news banner up. There's not a lot of new developments, but everybody looked at the numbers and said, hey, this is great. Our ratings are way up. And so everyone in the news business, particularly on television, trying to keep this story alive. And yet ratings reflect popular interest, don't they? Howard? Well, sure, but if you're going to program your news network that way, you know, you could put on uh, naked jello wrestling and, and do a big number. I mean, what's being shoved aside here, Kitty? Uh, a big major U.S. incursion or uh, military offensive in Afghanistan, uh, everything else from Al Franken. The only other story that's getting any traction is Mark Sanford. Why? Because it's got sex in it. All right, Robert, what do you think? Well, it's true. I mean, uh, all of this coverage is uh, very little news. I mean, uh, there's really one piece of data so far. Michael Jackson died at the age of uh, uh, 50. The rest of it so far is speculation, retrospectives, reactions of, uh, 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 of, of people. And this is an awful lot of coverage for a very, very little bit of uh, uh, information. But, you know, people are talking about this, uh, this survey. 65% of the country Let's say this up for there's our too viewers. much coverage. Yeah, let, let's put this up for our viewers. It's a, it's a Pew um, Research Center poll. Majority of Americans think that it, the coverage right. is too much, 64% right there, and 29% right, say the story is the right amount. Um, and yet, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think we have to look at this. Uh, that, that doesn't mean that they're not watching it. I mean, the equivalent would be, I suppose if you ask a hundred people who smoked two packs of cigarettes a day the following question are cigarettes bad for you my guess would be nearly all of them would answer the question yes but they're still smoking two packs a day now everybody isn't watching michael jackson coverage but while they're filling out many of them the yes box in the survey is there too much michael jackson coverage they're watching it while they're complaining that there's too but, much but, coverage but especially they're watching but especially on cable kitty uh, if you have an average audience of a million if you get another million the executives are breaking out the champagne but that doesn't mean that most of the That's country right. is quite as fixated on this and look i disagree on this point there have been some important developments this week the battle over the will the custody of the kids if 15 minutes of every hour was devoted to michael jackson i don't think i would have any problem but instead it's about 50 minutes out of every hour at least much of the day on many of the cable channels and i think that is way overboard but at the same time i know what the dilemma is if you go away from this right now you cut off our debate you go to afghanistan and those numbers are going to drop. You know, uh, Robert, you do say you, you, you study popular culture. You do say there's an upside to all of this coverage, don't you? Well, whenever there's a death of a major figure, we get all of these retrospectives and all of these looks, look back uh, uh, and everything. And let's face it, Michael Jackson was a really important part of uh, uh, the American cultural landscape. And there are a lot of people, my students included, who didn't know about those Motown years, who didn't know about uh, a lot of the things that's being uh, uh, covered here. So whenever we get one of these blanket coverage kinds of things, a lot of people do learn a lot of things because they have no other choice. Uh, and again, I would agree, this, this, this deserves to be covered. I just don't think that in the best of all possible worlds, or even in the okay of all possible worlds, that it should get anywhere as near the coverage it does at the expense of some really important stories that are finding themselves in the little text crawls at the bottom of yet another replay of the Motown 25 uh, uh, performance of Billie Jean. Howard, how does the new technology factor into this? I mean, you have you have all these platforms where you can have where you can see it simultaneously. Doesn't that add to the Im impact of seeming to have it everywhere at once? 
Oh, sure, the idea that you can get this on every website in America, on Twitter, on your Facebook page, uh, does add to the ubiquity of it. But I think at the same time, uh, look, part of what's driving this, because you, know, you look at the death of other famous entertainers, maybe George Harrison, I think was a more important musical figure. But with Michael Jackson, you have the essential weirdness. And of course, the child molestation allegations. He was a very controversial figure, his musical legacy aside. And so that is playing out to some degree uh, with the battle over the will and the children and were, were, were drugs involved and all of that. I'm interested in that. I just think the the volume has gotten so high and the coverage has gotten so relentless that I think it is turning off a lot of people who are not tuning in or maybe dipping in for five minutes who are saying, hey, wait a minute, there are other things going on in the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Robert, some thoughts on uh, some final thoughts on this? Well, for one thing, I think we, we should have seen this coming for a mile. We knew that if a story like uh, Michael Jackson's uh, untimely death ever happened, we knew exactly what would happen. We've seen this happen before. We know how this cycle works. And there is absolutely no evidence in the way the news industry is uh, currently operating in this country that this isn't going to happen over and over again when these kinds of stories uh, 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 break. This shouldn't have surprised us, and we should... Uh, uh, we can just wait because it's going to happen again. There's no doubt about it. All right. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your thoughts on this you. very important topic. Robert Thompson, Howard Kurtz, thank you. Now, thank you. coming up, we are covering other stories tonight, including...